Hi everyone and welcome to today's um, episode of the Zen and Tech podcast. It's actually the third episode and we're going to have a closer look into sound and how sound can impact our holistic practices and different types of um, um, sound devices we can use and apps on the iPad. Um, yeah, I think we jump straight into it and um, we invite um, Gabriel to the game as well. Uh, just hold on a sec. I invite Gabriel. Alright, I think Gabriel is invited. As soon as he's ready, he will join our podcast today. Um, yeah, I think sound is a, a very powerful tool to be used in our um, holistic practices and it can change our, um, our perception of um, reality and uh, our, uh, yeah, how, how, how we do our meditation and stuff. So it, it really, it's really important tool. And, um, Hold on, I think I invited the first. I'm driving, hold on. <laughs> I'm gonna get off the live, I'm driving right now. Hold on. Um. <laughs> I think we invited the wrong person, hold on a sec. Anything fun? See if he comes to it. <laughs> My goodness, <laughs> almost invited the wrong person here. <laughs> oh man, he nearly had an accident. Um, <laughs> oh <my goodness. laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's why we never use uh, the phone um, when we uh, <laughs> when we uh, when we driving. Um, I don't know why that is so difficult today. Let's see. One. Let's see if that works now. Um, it should work any minute. Come on, help me out here. <laughs> oh. Okay, I think um, Gabriel will join us any minute. Um, he has probably some technical issues, um, probably with the, with the internet connection. But I, I just jump straight into the um, the podcast. Um, so I want to um, kick the podcast off with a, a little story I experienced um, two weeks ago. Um, and um, that was on the event in Manchester. And um, the, the event in Manchester, it was a, a sound experience well, together with the, the light experience itself. And um, the, hold on, it's not gonna. So the, 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 the sound experience with the sound experience um, together. And um, it was quite unique because I never really worked with um, Christian. Christian is his name and made the, the side experience. And uh, I never worked with him um, on an event, so he didn't know what to expect and I didn't know what to expect. And um, it, 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 as we started, the, the first session was overall three sessions. Um, he started making his usual thing. And I was quite confused because uh, I expected a little bit something else. Um, but, um, because I usually work with um, James together, he plays the beautiful um, singing bowls, and um, <laughs> and um, um, Christian plays more shamanic instruments, um, rattles. Um, he has uh, also singing bowls, but a lot of more noise generating in instruments. So it's not really a room filling sound experience. So I was quite confused as we, as we started and I thought, mm, um, how, how do people take that? 
because I just usually work with different types of sound. At the end of the experience, I was very surprised that people report back um, during the light experience that these sounds um, actually really triggered some memories and allowed them to go really deep. And um, that was really uh, amazing feedback uh, in a way because I expected it completely different in a way. And um, and it um, compared to uh, a sound bath, for example, for James, uh, it's not a constant sound experience. So it's not really a room filling sound experience. So when you lay there under the light, um, have your um, have your light um, journey. Um, you could hear more some rattling sounds moving through the room, um, some wind chants um, playing. So it's more like localizing sounds within the room. Another um, thing I explained, experienced very similar was um, last um, um, retreat in, in Wales, uh, where tree made in the evening, she made usually a shamanic um, journeying, shamanic uh, practice. And um, she always started it with a um, hypnagogic um, meditation. And within that journeying, she used to rattle and also walked around. And it was, it was, it was very unique because you don't really know when and where the, the rattle is. And sometimes you think, oh, it's straight in front of my face. But actually, it's completely across the room. But because you have your eyes closed, you can't really localize where um, where the, the yeah you know, where the sound is coming from, and um, that that was a very unique experience, I think. And um, on on that event with um, with with um, in in Wales, um, Christian built that soundscape and it was a very unique soundscape in that way. Um, despite me initially thinking, oh, that can't really work together. Um, I think meanwhile, Gabriel joined us as well. Um, hi, Gabriel. Hi, Joe. How are yeah. you? Good, good. <laughs> uh, so good to be here. I uh, couldn't change up my setup, unfortunately, but uh, it's fine. Maybe I can add it along the way, the microphone and the new phone. And so <laughs> okay, <laughs> I accidentally invited someone um, wrong to the to the to the um, podcast. <laughs> Nearly caused an accident because hey, the person fine. picked up the phone and was driving. And oh my goodness, it was, the, the names are so close, and I just typed it in and invited it and that person picked up the 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 the, the phone and <laughs> um probably wasn't expecting being actually <laughs> oh man yeah it's episode three we're still learning every day <laughs> yeah yeah hopefully everything is okay there i think it didn't come to an actual accident it just looked like something was going wrong there um i started Started our podcast off with just telling a little bit, a little story about the event I had two weeks ago in Manchester, and um, yeah, I think he's gone again. And um, it, yeah, it, it, it just come back to that. Um, and uh, when you, for example, have a, a sound experience with James in in Yorkshire, James has a very gentle way to actually make these um, sound experience but a very powerful way as well and um, he usually plays the big crystal singing balls uh, and they're really room filling so the sound is just everywhere and very intense as well so if, if people have the sound experience um, and also light experience they, they usually brought back they feel like the sound is going through them and they're always connected um, to the sound journeys with, with um, these type of experiences, but never really just with sounds um, like from a rattle or something like that. Um, and another 
thing I, I want to add to that. I I start being well a little bit more than a year ago. I had an, an a live event with um, uh, with Elizabeth um, Botrick and Tamara Klein, and that was also a combined sound um, light experience. But these two girls played um, big gongs and also other instruments, of course. But they played the big gongs, and it's really really fascinating how you can just hit these gongs and stroke them very slightly with um, with the hammers, are they called probably? Um, and then the, the sound almost becomes um, sliding or it, it almost um, starts becoming like a, 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 a singing bowl when you, when, you, when you just go around with the singing bowl. And that's what oh, was a really room feeling um, ex experience. Um, but um, the, um, despite being so loud instruments, they played really, really gentle and they balanced the sound experience really nice. I think sound is such an important um, part of any holistic practices. If you, if you do meditation or if you, if you, um, if you, if you, if you, if you it doesn't really matters, everything what you do in connection with yourself, deep relaxation, sound is a, a, a really great um, way and a really great guide going through our experience. Um, the, yeah, um, I just want to bring more out different instruments. I'm not a sound healer by all means, but um, things I experienced so far are the big gongs, um, big singing balls, um, also um, small singing balls. And I have one for, for my own events, and it's a, it's a small metal one. It's not a very expensive one, but it's a, it's a very nice little heavyweight um, singing ball. And I usually use my singing ball to initiate the, um, the, 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 the light experience, but also to initiate breaks. So I break up the whole light experience with certain sounds. But uh, the, the, the sound of that very light and clean sound is, is something so soothing and it's something um, very, very relaxing in that sense. And um, I, I just mentioned the rattle as well. I mean, it's such a simple instrument with um, maybe made from a, an old, um, a dried um, pumpkin with some seeds inside. And then you rattle that, you have the, almost that rattlesnake sound, but it almost becomes something constant when, when you play it right. And, and when, when you just start listening to it, it, it feels almost a little bit too much or a little bit um on rhythmic so to speak maybe but um as you're playing it it almost the sound just starts melting into each other it's almost like wind or um yeah or a storm or something like that and if you're journeying in which way ever um these sounds can be very very powerful something i um I haven't seen before neither the was on the uh, event in Manchester. Um Christian played um, these wind charms and the wind charms they have I didn't know that they have four um, all four elements. They have um different um sound um types. So you have one for um air, you have one for earth, you have one for fire, and I have one for water. And they have a very different type of um sound flavor, different, um, a, a different warmth to it as well. And um, Christian used it at the end of the light experience to when all the lights were off, to just walk around with the wind charm and just fill the room with very um, lovely and light sounds. Um, I just invite um, Gabrielle again, let's give that another go. Maybe it works this time. He probably has today a little bit connection issues. Can happen. Let's give that another go. Gabriel? 
<laughs> hey, hey, Joel. Yeah. Can you hear me well now? Yeah, I can hear. Yeah, I think you awesome. you broke off before. Ah, uh, unfortunately, yeah. sometimes we must uh, encounter some technical difficulties, but it yeah. is what it is. Let me try again. Ooh. Maybe this We're... time it works better. I just was talking about the um, wind charms. Uh, yeah. how um, these wind charms can be used um, in these event settings to just fill up the, the room with very light sounds. And they also mentioned that these wind charms um, have, uh, um, um, based on different um, elements, fire, water, earth and air, uh, and that they have a different sound flavor to them. And it's very, very gentle. But uh, now you're here and we all can hear you. I'm eager to hear about the experience you had last night. Today is a difficult day to have a podcast. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I think we just continue and come back to, to, to um, Gabriel. Um, Ah, another interesting thing um, I uh, I experienced on the on the last event was um, the uh, after the first session, um, Christian um, went back in his room and decided to add an additional instrument to um, to the experience, and he grabbed one of his tuning forks and. Um, He, he grabbed one of his tuning forks and uh, um, played the tuning fork at the end after half an hour of people being under the light and journeying through, um, through, through the space of light and meditation. And he played the tuning fork. And it's, 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 it was quite unique because people were so relaxed and so chill and gave that uh, thing a little um, go. The room was filling up with, with, with the really pitchy noise of that tuning fork, and people just start, you know, closing their ears and getting really tense. And um, I was just fascinated that you play so many different sounds and so many different frequencies, but there are apparently certain frequencies when you combine them with the light, you kind of they feel really painful. And I also experienced it myself when I have my um, own experience here at home, light experience at home. And afterwards, I go in my kitchen and turn the, the kitchen fan on. The fan has kind of a noise. It just makes me clinch. It's, it's, it's just a noise that hurts. But usually, I'm totally okay. But after the light experience, I'm kind of in a, in a different frequency. And if I think if you hit these certain frequencies, and Christian probably hit that specific frequency with his tuning fork, people feel very uncomfortable with that. That was a very unique experience in that. So, um, well, so uh, now you're, you're making me thinking about just like uh, white uh, light is encompassing all the color and spectrum. White noise is, is encompassing a lot of Vibe frequencies, is yeah, that right? Yeah, white noise is basically all frequencies together, and um, so that makes white noise. It's similar like uh, with light, when you have all different colors in light, then it becomes white. And um, white noise has, has has very powerful impact um, when you when you stand next to a river or. Um, or waterfall and you're surrounded with that white noise and it's very soothing as well i haven't not i haven't uh, known that so it's interesting yeah yeah, yeah. good yeah. stuff we said earlier as well that um white noise machines can be used for for babies or not to to, to help them sleep and yeah they're quite popular for that yeah i didn't know that <laughs> but, yeah <laughs> But yeah, occasionally when I do my, my light experience and I, I, I use white noise um, because it's just a very neutral, soothing sound. Yeah, I, and I, I, know, I know there are um, some devices which are popular that are used to emit white noise and 
<clears throat> like I said, they use it for babies, but they also use it for people who cannot sleep and they use a background noise to draw every other noise out from the room or from their minds. And uh, I think it's a, it's a good uh, subject to talk about. I mean, sound devices. For me, the start in this uh, direction was Orba. So Orba is what you would call a pocket synthesizer because it fits in your pocket. <laughs> so um, it's really easy to use. You have a middle button which changes all the in instruments. And you also have intuitive, um, intuitive interactions with it. So you can hold, you can tilt, you can um, shake or hit. You can even use two uh, ore bars together and you'll get another dimension out of it. So yeah, this is a pocket synthesizer. <laughs> you knew about this, Joel Orba? No, I haven't heard of it. Well, you, you sent me the other day a video. I know we, we, um, you're not allowed to talk about your um, specific clients, but um, um, the video you shared with me was, was a person who just experienced um, Orbit for the first time. And I'm not 100% sure, but um, that person um, felt like has, has a special condition. But... Um, that, we're all uh, special. <laughs> yeah, we're all special. But, um, but uh, I just could see that person interacting very naturally with the sound and just without have to read into uh, manuals or anything like that, just help hold the device up and just start playing with it. And yeah. uh, I literally could see that person's face light, light up with um, playing that device. And exactly. Just, yeah, having that direct uh, interaction with um, something and making a movement, getting a sound, bringing it all the way around, pressing a button and getting a completely different sound. And I found a very nice video you shared me about. Yeah, it's nice with devices like this because you can even um, plug them into a bigger speaker so you get this speaker this is in fact a speaker itself but you can plug it into a bigger speaker and you get um, even high quality sounds so it's it's nice to have that option and also you can plug in some headphones and I know you have an opinion about uh, different type of headphones and um, Before we go and, uh, there, I'd really yeah. love to hear your thoughts on the experience you had last night because you had a really unique experience, did you? Yeah. Yeah. So, just tell about what 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 was the event? What what what, what did you do last night? So last night I attended an event uh, that is called uh, Overnight Sound Bath. It was. Um, hosted by Ravi from Alchemia Wellness. Alchemia Wellness being a um, Romanian-based um, uh, sound healing practitioner, which encompasses all kinds of techniques that involve enriching your senses and bringing you to a higher vibrational and spiritual level. And so, uh, long story short, I attended uh, together with um, a few other strangers at first. That I didn't knew them. I, uh, it was the first time meeting uh, Ravi as well and in person. And we had, we had a blast. So it all started with a small, uh, with a light stretch, a bit of uh, a context beforehand, and then we laid down and Ravi played for us a bunch of instruments from singing bowls to uh, hand pans and a, a bunch, a bunch of other instruments that I wouldn't, I couldn't even name you because I don't know them, but you could hear him playing and moving around us. And it was, it was amazing. So uh, well, for me, it was the, the first time. Was throughout the whole night, wasn't it? Throughout the whole night. Yeah. Throughout the whole night. So you're supposed so, to go to sleep there. Did... Yes, you're, in you're encouraged 
to go to sleep, but if you cannot, just stay and uh, you're 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 going to fall asleep. So I could have sworn I hadn't fall asleep, but apparently I had multiple times where I was out because I couldn't remember some of the stuff, and other participants couldn't couldn't remember other stuff that happened last night. So it's very interesting to hear afterwards all the shared uh, thoughts about this. It's fantastic. Where was that? It was right here in Bucharest. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's a place called... Uh, Sa uh, it's, uh, it's on the tip of my tongue and the place is called Somebody Studio. Somebody Studio. It's on Poparus. Yeah, it's in the middle of Bucharest and a lot of like-minded people gathered there. I'm going to be there more often um, now because I know the place and I like, I like it. And um, I'm happy because for the first time I wasn't late. I'm unfortunately known to be late. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, I, I loved it. It's, it was... I started to take uh, the, the podcast off with talking about uh, um, a few specific instruments. And I also pointed out that we are not um, sound practitioners as such, so that we just experience them on our own events or when we go to events. And um, I just, um, do you have a specific uh, instrument you, uh, you want to share? about from 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 the from the experience you had last night uh, or one who just stand out um compared to the others yes so the one that i enjoyed the most is the one that uh, ravi is holding in this picture so it's um it's just like your typical I mean, it's not a typical singing bowl. It's a singing bowl, yeah, with a handle. So you start it and then you direction it where you want it to channel all the vibrational, um, yeah. Okay, yeah, you can you make the sound and then you point it towards someone's face or body or whatever like that. He used to point it to our lower chakra and then raise it upwards. And keep, he kept doing that. It's amazing. It's awesome. Uh, he also used the tunic fork, but it wasn't in a light and sound context. So it was all, um, it was all quiet in the room. And he came with the tuning fork and did that at uh, our foreheads. And I liked it. Everyone, everyone did. Nobody had a um, bad experience. So maybe um, doing that during a light session without um, saying you're going to do it, without announcing it uh, beforehand, is not a good idea. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's really nice. Really cool. So um, do you think that... Um, um, the orba could be used in such an environment as well or do you think is that more something for your personal practice i think um it's more a bit on the personal uh practice but it can use it can be used in an event successfully if you plug it uh into a speaker into a larger speaker and at the end of the event you uh, invite the participants to play around with it. Why not? Yeah, yeah. they'll they'll have a blast, and they'll uh, they'll have the same reaction as uh, the guy in the video that I sent you. <laughs> can you can you change the sounds as well? Is it that you have more um, calming sounds, or that you have more bell-like sounds, or yeah? So I've uh, set it up mine to have different sounds, but you can basically change them up. It has an application. You use the app to, to change up the sounds and to load, out, to load up other type of presets on your Orba. They've since the, launched another version of this device, 
but it looks the same. It just works even better. Yeah. It can sustain. You can you can even uh, record. So that's why it's called a handheld synthesizer. You can record uh, like overlapping sounds, okay. and it's amazing. You can yeah, you can basically make uh, your own music with it. But I know you have some experience in this direction as well, yeah. Joel. Um, as, tell me about your 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 thoughts on on synthesizers. Yeah. Um, first of all, my partner is an absolute synthesizer nerd. He has a full wall full of these um, Eurorack modules. So he he comes from that background, and I'm exposed to that quite often uh, through that. Um, but I just recently started playing um, in a synthesizer app, a module, a synthesizer app on my iPad. And um, the, the reason why I started with it was... Um, because I, I have some vibroacoustic platforms, so I come back to that. Um, but with vibroacoustic platforms, you really experience the, the, the lower end of the spectrum of music, uh, very intense. And what I often feel is that a lot of music, even though it sounds good on your headphones or on your speakers, when you have it or experience it on the uh, vibroacoustic platforms, that the the, the 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 lower end of the sound become a little bit sloppy or not as lovely or rhythmic. So I'm always on the lookout for music who really considers these um, bass tones, and um, that. That's how basically everything starts kicking off with me experimenting with sounds because I'm not a musician at all in it. Um, but yeah, uh, the uh, one um, in, in, in desire to get a better sound experience on my, uh, my vibroacoustic platforms, I was looking for um, a, a, an application I can actually create and control the, 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 the platforms very specific with certain rhythmic and certain frequencies. So I started playing around with these uh, with the Moog 15 app, and um, and I'm learning at the moment the um, synthesis and the, the 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 signal path going through a modular synthesizer and so on. And by all means, not there yet, but um, <laughs> I actually get some sounds out and very interesting sounds out. But um, I also use, um, how is it called, Synthesizer on, on my iPad. That's a, a sequence app where you have um, two synthesizers and they generate the, um, the, the tones. And then you have the synthesizer or the sequencer with loads of little squares on where you can then tap the different squares and then triggers the, the synthesizer on these different points. And um, that... Um, that app I used um, on the last event, um, retreat in Wales to to make music because I didn't have any internet connection there and all the prepared music I couldn't play so I had to kind of make the music on the go for the people uh, for the light experience and I never done that before so I just had to basically wing it and um, that really basically started my my interest in creating specific sounds and specific soundscapes for the light experience events. Um, I think the iPad is really a great tool to, to make music because you can um, guide the music within the different uh, applications. I usually use um, Ohm for that. It's, a, it's an app which takes the different apps uh, which are running on the iPad and then you can mix them and add filters to it. That sort of thing. I think that's a, that's a really great application. Um, but yeah, I want to come back to the, the, to the vibroacoustic platforms later. Um, I think it's more, it's, it's, it's kind of important to talk about how we listen to music because a lot of people use apps like um, a, you use it quite often. Um, how do you call it again? Um, Brain FM. Brain FM, exactly. So yeah. a, um, binaural beat apps. And a lot of people listen to binaural beats, but um, they listen on their little uh, in-ear headphones or on really bad speakers. But um, 
the fact is to get the full effect from binaural beats, you need really good quality um, air found, um, headphones. And, and I think that's where, where a lot of people kind of fail in the world of the, um, binaural beats, yeah, something like that, or use the, the, the Bose um, headphones, the noise cancelling function. Yeah, it's just just a, a pair of headphones who can reproduce a, a, a huge range of frequencies um, in a very clear manner, and um, yeah, I, I I think a lot of people use these apps and kind of expect a certain outcome, but they don't experience it because they use it on on bad headphones or they just use it on on their um, speakers on, on, on phone speakers or um, a cheap bluetooth speaker and in order to reproduce all these different frequencies you just need a really good pair of headphones they don't have to be massively expensive the good quality air um, headphones out there who are not too expensive but um, the more expensive range is usually also a little bit better one um yeah uh, I think the, the, the vibroacoustic platforms uh, is a really interesting tool to actually experience music uh, in a completely different way uh, because it's almost like a, a big subwoofer you lie on it or it's a, a bed which vibrates to the, to, the, to the frequencies of the music. There's a, it's a um, I think it's a Danish company. Um, it's called Vibroacoustics and they built these massive platforms with, uh, with these bass resonators inside and you light on that um, on that bed and experience music um, um, from there and that's where the the, 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 the the desire came from to actually experience better bass sounds or more more catered bass sounds in in, in, in music but there's also another device um, it's called sensate that's a it's like a, a stone shaped device you connect to your um, app on your, on your phone yeah. and then you place it on your on your chest and what all that does it excites the uh, how is the nerve called the, the, the vagus nerve yeah vagus nerve exactly yeah. uh, it stimulates the vagus nerve and that vagus nerve is connected with loads of um, it's connected to the of, um, how do you call it? Um, it travels almost, and, yeah. yeah. And it tra travels almost throughout your whole body. So. Yeah. So when you lie on a, on a vibrating bed, then you, you excite that uh, vagus nerve. Um, yeah. And that sensor device does basically the same things, but it's just a little bit more mobile. My platforms are about, 20 kilograms and it's two meters long by 90 so it's quite a, a big thing to carry around when you're on the go so the the, the sensei device is more something like that and um, I actually um, had people telling me that they really love the sensei device I never used it myself but um, I have really people giving me feedback that they absolutely adore it I can really, really believe that yeah absolutely yeah Interesting. So, um, I know another way how to stimulate the vagus nerve. Uh, it involves humming. Some, I sometimes do it when I'm stressed uh, because here in Bukarest we have the worst traffic and that's why I'm sometimes stressed. I use, I use that time in the traffic to do some humming and that's the only, uh, almost the only time I do humming, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But let's come back to humming because I know a uh, Vriba pad can do something that humming may, who knows, maybe cannot do. And uh, I'm now talking about uh, f about frequency peaks, about uh, self resonation. Yeah. How can you how can you uh, achieve that with? Uh, Different I mean, the, methods. As you said, with humming, you, you get you, 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 your body into a certain frequency. But something I experienced on the on the uh, vibroacoustic platform is that the, the platform itself has um, its own frequency. 
So when you uh, drive up the frequency, so from about 10 hertz up to 40 hertz, then it's not, it's, it's not a, a linear curve of vibration. So the intensity of the, free, uh, of the, of the felt frequency um, is almost like a bow. And that's because the, my um, platforms I, I, I've made have the um, self frequency of about 30 hertz. So if I, the closer I get to 30 hertz, it gets really intense. But just because the, the, the frequency of the platform itself starts resonating at that. So when you turn up the frequency from 10 to 40, you have kind of that intensity curve. And they're still tinkering around how you can straighten up that, um, that frequency. And I assume you could do it with uh, making the, 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 the platform more heavy or lighter, but, or bringing the self-resonance of the device itself further down, that you, that you below the, the frequency you would actually want to play on the, on the platform. But I think it's quite tricky to dial that in. But as I, as I just built them, they're actually quite easy to build as well. Um, the, as a builder, I never intended or never thought that that might be an issue. Always thought, yeah, okay, that when you, when you start with um, 10 and then you just have a very linear curve up to 40. For everyone interested in, in building these um, platforms, they're actually very easy to build. All you need is a, a bass shaker, often used for home cinemas or um, for gaming rigs, and a very, very cheap, um, very cheap um, sound um, amplifier. And oh. then you just um, divide the sound from your smartphone um, into your headphones with a with a double plug and um, the other one goes into your um, um, amplifier of the um, um, vibroacoustic platforms. So you can dial in the sound on the platform and um, on, on the headphones. I mean, the, the cost of making one of them, if you go for really cheap um, resonators, you're looking at about 30 odd pounds. If you go for a little bit more expensive ones, you look about 100 pounds. If you go for the very expensive phones, you're looking about four to five hundred pounds. All the performance oh. will be different and the frequency range is different uh, between the resonators as well. What you basically need to make the system work is um, a good solid piece of wood which doesn't bend, it could be plywood, it can be a solid timber and um, you need some rubber feet which um, prevent all the frequencies going into the, into the floor and prevent you from bonding around in your room when you're playing them. <laughs> and um, you can also make it more advanced with, um, with cushioning that you separate the base with the actual platform. But as a simple, simple start, you can use just a, um, um, a piece of plywood, screw the resonator underneath the, the plywood and um, pop that onto rubber feet. And um, you can already start experiencing sounds in a very different way. So it's 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 interesting that you can do them so easy and make them so easy. But a lot of people, a lot of people are interested in, but they don't really find the access to it. And that's kind of a, a shame for for a tool you can basically make that easy yourself. Yeah, I mean it's a nice system that you can. Uh store it under your bed, under your couch, so it doesn't need to take up a lot of space. No. Uh, yeah, but there's, there's it's, also it's like awesome. Like a company like the Vibra Acoustics. So if you, if you, if you look at um, Google and um, search on Instagram, for example, for Vibra Acoustics, you find that the company of bits, they're specialized in, in making these, uh, these platforms, but they're quite big as well. Uh, but they specialize to make um, platforms like that. But they have also a play um, a, a SoundCloud um, channel, and um, released some of the of the um, soundscapes on SoundCloud. And oh. I tried some 
of the of them out on my own platforms and i have to say that the, the vibrations on 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 the platform so generally the, the the soundscapes are very pleasing to listen to and to experience but the the, the deep vibrations are very constant so it, there's not a lot of change going through and um when i experienced or experimented with the platforms myself i was always looking for a little bit more dynamic experience with um, different types of um, feedback i get so you can kind of get very loose vibrations where it feels almost um, like you um, for example in a car or in an airplane but it also can be used when you um, listen to shamanic drumming and the, the, it almost feels like the, 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 the shaman is drumming on your back so you really feel like that that kick um, through, through your body so I always yeah. found a little bit more a dynamic experience more interesting and um, my experiments with um, building them and making sounds for them um, was from beginning on very dynamic. And just the other day, I uh, found their, their playlist on Sound, uh, SoundCloud and I not really and expected to be that different. And it was quite interesting to see that they do really, uh, they have apparently a completely different approach to it. Hey, who knows? Maybe you can uh, collaborate with them. <laughs> uh, well, hey, what I think it's very interesting. I think you're onto something because I'm always thinking about digital soundscapes versus uh, the real life. And what you're talking, what you're describing is a blend of both. So it's in the comfort of your own home. You don't uh, invite in a shaman or you don't invite in someone who's rattling all those, but you do feel the vibration just like it, it's a live event. So you feel just like if you're living that uh, experience. Uh, it's not only on your headphones, you lie on, on that and it's almost as if you're there, yeah. isn't that? Absolutely, So. Yeah. So that, I, I, what's your opinion about analogic versus digital? Uh, I know this is a bit something else. I think when you, you mean if you have sound playing on speakers compared to actual instruments? Oh, uh, yes. And then we can, uh, yeah, yeah, basically that. So I think of my personal experience is when you have actual instruments that have um, a much stronger resonance inside the room. So when you um, li listen to proper singing bowls, I think you can't um, reproduce that sound experience of a, of a crystal singing bowl um, on, on speakers because it, 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 it just has a different feel and intensity to it. But I'm but saying that is it's all also based on the quality of speakers you have or the there are definitely some speaker systems out there who can produce these sounds much better but, but in general i think for 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 an, an event environment i think it's always nice having an actual sound practitioner there who reads the room and guides these people through that, um, in my case, light experience with their sounds and with their instruments. Um, also, the, 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 the spatial awareness, it's something I mentioned in the very beginning of the, of the podcast, that when you lie there and someone's really walking with the rattle through the room, or you also mentioned it in, in, in your experience you had last night. So when you lie there and you are in your, in your space and then you follow that, that sound through the room, I think it's really hard to replicate that on a, on a, on a, on a, on a digital system or on, on speakers. I think if you have a full surround system, um, you probably can kind of emulate it, but it's not exactly the same, I'd say. Um, yeah, um, in my opinion, um, so 
real life is very good for a long, slow progressing, wide spectrum type of uh, sound journey. Yeah. So, d d like the one la from last night. Um, in the same time, uh, digital soundscapes uh, do have the capability to to be more compressed, more com, com yeah, more compressed into something shorter and um, uh, powerful, fast, fast tension releasing uh, sound technique, uh, if you may. So, you know, those 5D soundscapes, you don't know where you're hearing the sounds from, especially, yeah, of course, you need a surround uh, headphones or surround system, like you said. But we, nowadays, we are getting a bit uh, desensitized, maybe, towards those type of uh, 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 things, because, um, like, binaural beats are being used into uh, movies. Um, we are getting... Uh, uh, taste of them even in uh, video games and of course when you hear that for the first time with real life instruments it's going to have a more powerful impact and to me uh, it makes my mind uh, almost immediately go into theta state so it's a bit of a wondrous um, a type of consciousness uh, state state of consciousness because you begin to imagine to imagine and to visualize and a bit of data in my opinion goes a, a long way so unlocks a lot of stuff in you especially even deep sleep even though theta is known to be the uh, the the you, you you can you can help me out here but i know it's it's the lead way into sleep so it's not really sleep is not really awake it's it's you the liminal the, space you mean the, the hypnagogic space so where which you basically happens in the brainwaves, brainwaves. From yes a low beta into the alpha and it's just the, the gateway going to sleep or you're still kind of awake so after alpha you get theta yeah. theta right and then you go even slower but that theta state is uh, really something else because uh, many people lack this type of uh, great perceptual diversity which in fact leads to a healthy and balanced mind so if you lack a bit of theta prolonged theta activity uh, maybe you cannot remember your dreams maybe you don't dream that much but if you enter state uh, prolonged theta state by using different sound techniques or light and sound techniques then it unlocks stuff yeah. stuff in you uh, that's my opinion and um, i just want to mention something about the um, real is playing real instruments compared to on speakers i came across the um, assistant the other day it's called the um, data machine and it's um a, a a MIDI controller which um, can um, can um, basically it's a MIDI controller used for actual instruments so they're actual in, uh, actuators like solenoids and um, little shaking devices and stuff and you can use uh, MIDI signals to actually trigger um, different um, instruments, real-world instruments. It's not a very, very cheap system, I have to say, but um, I just found it a very cool and innovative system where you can use that, maybe uh, the, your digital workstation and translate that into um, real-world sounds, where you can maybe build your own um, sound healing um, system but trigger it over um, a sequencer on, on on your ipad or on from your from your computer and um, found it just a very cool system i think it's invented by a, a german guy and um, as i said it's not an not not a cheap system but it's 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 just really nice that, that you can use that simple device then you attach a solenoid to it and that solenoid can trigger for example a drum 
och, eh, och trigger shaker och sånt som är där. Att den you use a sequence to actually trigger the, the certain solenoids of the meeting. And um, yeah, I, 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 I'd love to have one um, at some point. Um, <laughs> I think it could expand the, the way we, we make sounds on events or make sounds for our own holistic practices at home. Um, could, yeah, could um, change that in a really interesting way. So it's not really yeah, have... listening to music over headphones, you listen to actual instruments, but you don't need a, a sound practitioner playing the drum, or you can play more instruments together than one sound practitioner could play. I think that's, that's a very interesting direction to, to look at. I'll have a look into that, and someone in the comments sections here, are uh, uh, someone named Chief Thompson, is uh, suggesting we try out uh, the music generator called mynoise.net. So I'll, ha I'll have a look into that. I'll, I uh, already captured the screen, so I don't uh, lose this su nice. suggestion. <laughs> yeah. And I know that when we talk about this type of uh, practices and, um, and ways, ways we can uh, further um, explore this 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 uh, dimension can we can we uh, talk a bit more about other types of techniques beyond so we we talked about humming yeah yeah, yeah. And, and i also experienced a bit of humming yesterday uh, in the last night event and it was it was nice so a, a participant actually joined in and I thought it was planned. It was nice. Everyone else said, hey, good job, good job joining in. Even though you are supposed to sleep and need to enjoy, it was uh, a nice addition. It was a girl, she, she, yeah, so a girl joined into the humming at some point and it was nice, it was very nice. And uh, I know you, can, you also mentioned at some point about uh, tapping. Yeah, yeah. I there as well, I'm not an expert in that, as, um, but I've heard that uh, a lot of people use it um, within their trauma therapy. And if they, if they have a, um, an, an episode, a traumatic episode, and that they use tapping to yeah. bring themselves back into the moment, to feel themselves. And I think feeling vibrations or sound vibrations have, has a lot to do with feeling um, the moment and being in the moment and um, when, when you think about back when you, when you were a little child and your mom kind of um, brought your you, 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 you little wagon to, to, to your shade or something like that to help to sleep so we kind of going in different states as soon our whole body goes in certain frequencies and um, yeah, I just heard the, the other day that a lot of people within trauma therapy use tapping to um, bring themselves back into the moment when they lose themselves. And it, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. As you mentioned, humming, that was the first thing that jumped in my mind with, uh, with the tapping. Um, I personally don't do any sort of tapping, but... Um, yeah, I just found it a very interesting fact that the tapping brings you back into the moment. And, and uh, it's all, uh, almost, it's always this, the same area, the solar plex, yeah, isn't that yeah. true? Uh, yeah. Last night, or uh, in, in fact, in the morning, we took turns into individual cleansing. So one-on-one -on -one cleansing uh, sound uh, session, sound healing session. And as you can see, Ravi placed a ball, a singing ball, on the same, on the same exact uh, area, so on the chest. And at some point, he rung that singing ball as well. It was nice. How, the, it was how nice. did that feel? It, it felt amazing, but I, tell, I told you, my favorite part was when he held that singing ball by the handle and he directed the, the energy upward. Yeah. So that... That, that that felt nice. That, that was nice. That's 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 probably something. It's really hard to reproduce with 
any sort of device or any sort of technology. You literally need someone holding it and take, making the moves manually. And, and that's why I cannot recommend enough uh, Alchemy Awareness and Ravi from uh, Alchemy Awareness. He is uh, located in Timishara. It's a wonderful place and I'm going to visit there in a couple of months. Um, so hopefully I'll even bring uh, more people with me. We can do a session there. Who knows? We'll see. Sounds, that sounds really cool. So for, yeah. pe for people who are in that area, it's, it's apparently a really great place to go. Yeah. Yes, yes, it is. I know he also will have um, an event at Sarmise Getuza, another special place here in Romania. So um, he... Um, has a lot of good ideas, and that's why I'm mentioning, uh, I'm mentioning him. Uh, do you have other uh, folks who are into this, which you would like, or do you prefer to, to mention them in the end? I know. Um, as I said, um, the, my absolute favorite one is um, James in Yorkshire. I think he, he resonates really well with me, and he has a, uh, he has a really, really special way how to um guide a group um through um through the light experience on, on my events um, um the the um annika sound um with um, elizabeth um, bodrick and um, also tamara clean when they play together that has a very unique energy as well they play completely different and they have a completely different energy and Something I just had to realize last week, and despite having so many sound practitioners out there, and since the, 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 the so to speak, holistic boom, um, the, 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 the loads of new um, sound practitioners coming into the game, and I often had the impression many of them do more or less the same, and um. Since the, the, the last event in, in Manchester, I just had uh, 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 been shown a, a different way of, uh, of, of, of um, sound experience I never experienced before. And that really showed me that it's really down to the individual and not really down to the actual instrument they play. So if someone plays singing balls, um, someone else plays the singing balls completely different. and. A lot, a lot of these instruments are not like piano or guitar where you have to sit down and learn and learn over hours to actually get a, a sensible sound out of it. So loads of these instruments just can play and they're very intuitive. Um, many of the apps as well you can play on your iPad are very intuitive. You don't need really a, a background in music to make cool soundscapes. But the, the, I just um, find it fascinating how much personality uh, goes into the, into the sound experience itself. So you have people using these tools in, 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 in a similar way, but the way they're using it, it changed the whole um, sound experience completely. And I... I I, I also see, I mean, I was always aware of that sound is an incredible, important tool when, when you do your meditation or when you do your journey in, 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 in your way or in which way that is. Um, uh, but yeah, combining the right sounds to the right experience is, is absolutely crucial and can take a certain experience in a complete different way. So you can have an experience with, um, say, more side trance sounds, uh, speaking of a light experience, and that, that, that translates in a complete different way of experience the light compared to maybe have just the sounds um, of um, sacred instruments and becoming aware of the space. Um, but it's not only um, music um, or it, it's not only music. Um, which is important for the experience, it's also kind of accepting all the sounds around us. 
and um, that that also become very evident in 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 Manchester, because Manchester or the first day at least was in, incredible loud. So you had loads of traffic sounds and car horns, and then they had a, a, a motorbike group driving around in Manchester. It was incredible loud. So com the complete opposite you would expect for going on to an, uh, a, a relaxing journey uh, into the light but also incorporating these sounds and accepting that we are surrounded from different sounds and maybe bring them into our experience is something really important and it's something um, a lot of us including me have to learn to just be in that in that moment and accept that we have sounds and noises around us and instead of um closing down and try to push them away or becoming angry about it maybe more accepting them as a part of our environment and there was um one lady on the on the um, um on the event in manchester and she was really in tears after the the the, the light experience because the mountain bikes triggered a really positive experience um, she has that she goes every year on that um, motorbike um, show and this year unfortunately she can't go but um, that it's, it's something very sad for her but that the motorbikes triggered something in her so it's it's always easy to say oh no um, I'm disrupted by the sounds I'm surrounded with and you try to isolate you with, with um, noise cancelling headphones instead of accepting that you're not alone in the room and not alone in, 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 in your environment. And everyone has kind of the right to, to live their life and make their own noise and yeah. But it's also beautiful uh, experience, absolutely silence. And um, silence can, can be when you almost hear your own um, blood flowing through your ears. Some people uh, think that it's almost irritating as well because they don't have any sounds to, to be focused on. Um, yeah, I think, I think incorporating the, the surrounding more into my practice is something I I learned and experienced in the last event in, in Manchester, and um, and it's not always necessarily beautiful singing bowls and um, wind charms and um, tuning forks and all these instruments who make the experience. It's also the sound we are surrounded with. Um, another one I want to uh, bring to that is. Um, the last event I had in um, Canelworth, the in the basement snug, and the basement snug is almost a, it's kind of a, a, um, a greenhouse type of building. So when it rains, it rains onto the glass roof. And, and that evening it was raining, and I, uh, and the and the sounds I played for for the light bath uh, had was almost kind of cinematic sounds or a movie soundtrack like sounds and uh, we had the storm a very quiet storm in that in that in these sounds and parallel to the rain actually um, hammered down that glass roof and gave a really intense rain sound people picked up up on that and um, reported after that experience that was a quite an intense um, experience for them and an, uh, an intense feeling as well for um, the weather and uh, listening parallel to the cinematic sound. And if, um, I, I'm going to go tomorrow um, to Birmingham and meeting a, um, a shaman from Birmingham and he does um, shamanic journeying with different ways of sound and um, with incense and, and herbs and that sort of thing. And I meet him to see if we possibly could work together um, with, with the, the very modern 
type of live uh, light experience with him, very traditional um, nature connected practice. And, and, and I'm hoping for that very ancient experience you have with these things, with the sound of fire, the smell of fire, the smell of smoke, the, 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 um, the very ancient instruments like the shamanic drums and all that, but uh, paired that with, with, the, with the light by light. And I don't know where it goes, but I, I'm really looking forward to seeing that guy tomorrow. And um, sh um, yeah, just he's going to do a, um, a shamanic journey with me and I'm going to show the, the light of light to him. And I really hope that turns into something. Um, but yeah. yeah, I think sound is a very powerful um, tool within every holistic practice. And... Um, it's 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 a tool to be utilized um, correctly as, as well. Um, but just to wrap the whole thing up, I think we we had we 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 we, we spoke about different things about vibroacoustic platforms. We spoke about um, different body amp frequencies. Yes. Yeah, I would only add that when you talk about these type of ancient instruments. Yeah. We can also we can also say that you can make sound visible. Is that right? Yes, I think that's it's just wanted to say that that's the, the thing we want to um, wrap up with uh, because we both um, talked the other day about how we can make sound visible and and that is a is a very very beautiful uh, and, and impressive way to to to, um, to make art and to just visualize these frequencies yeah yeah it's, it's an it's another cool way to understanding um, vibrational patterns and uh, discharges in nature and so you can place salt or sand on a vibra pad you can uh, pour in water into a um, a singing bowl and once you've reached a certain frequency water will begin uh, jumping around or make uh, making a lot of interesting uh, uh, it's, it's almost like little yeah. squares or it's, yeah it's, it's, uh, water almost becomes kind of a standing wave where it almost freezes in its wave shape um, yeah and I have a guy um, I, I, I follow on Instagram it's uh, how and note it down. Um, it, it's Journey of Curiosity, and his name is Ch Jacob Lee Adlington. And he makes these amazing photographs of um, a little dish of water placed yeah. on his um, frequency generator. And yeah. something really, really. Uh, was surprising to me is these patterns he photographs look very similar to the visuals I experience under the light of light. So it's uh, it's it's um, it almost becomes the these kaleidoscopic exactly yeah, yeah yeah and that's a photograph of water and um, on the on these platforms. It's just a, a, a really 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 beautiful thing to see. It it's a close-up, right? Yeah, the dish is about that big. Okay. And then he has, then he has a, a frequency generator with a um, with a metal plate on top, where he places the, the dish on it, and then he has the camera facing from the top with a ring light, and then he makes the photographs. He probably has loads more different techniques to do that, but that's what he's basically doing. And then he makes the photographs of the water uh, exposed to the different frequencies and resonating yeah um, and in and in theory uh, uh, certain certain frequencies will structure water yeah and sometimes people using that uh, mentality will um, incorporate that into sound healing practices which will structure water inside your body so what's interesting in uh i don't know a lot of about that but last night i went to the bathroom 
five times. And I only had this bottle. So it's not even one liter of water. So I haven't drank one liter and I eliminated like three liters. I know it's a weird topic, but something happened. I'm telling you, I never get that. I never go to the bathroom like five times a night. What the hell? But I eliminated so much water and who knows? Maybe it's from that. Yep. I'm But open to... I often have very cold hands and feet. It can be 30 degrees outside, I have cold hands. And um, when I go onto the vibroacoustic platforms, I can really feel how my hands get really, really warm, my feet as well. And yeah. it's, it's just, I mean, we are 90% water or more. Uh, and uh, 70, 70%, 70%, I guess. Okay. And um, when you go into um, a vibroacoustic platform, you basically are that little dish uh, or, the, or the guy uh, photographs. So in your body, the water actually uh, does exactly that. And um, yeah, it's a, it's a very powerful feeling. It is. It really is. And I encourage anyone to give it a try. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I think we spoke about um, different sound healing practitioners we experienced ourselves and we met in um, for our own events and on events. We also um, sp uh, spoke about um, different sacred instruments um, like gongs and singing bowls, rattles, wind charms. Um, we also uh, spoke about white noise um different sound devices apps um the importance of um good speakers to listen to when you listen to binaural beats that you have the actual headphones who can reproduce these uh, frequencies um, correctly um we spoke about different apps you can use on your on your on your phone and uh, web pages apparently you can use to create interesting sounds for your own practice We, we spoke about our own frequencies, we experience when we're humming um, or go onto the vibroacoustics platforms. And we also spoke about how to make sound visible. And um, I think that rounds it up very nicely for that podcast. It started a little bit difficult with <laughs> you um, have connection problems and me almost causing an accident um, <laughs> someone else. But uh, as always, I think we try to improve on top of every um, podcast. And um, I hope that we soon can introduce some more guests to our podcast. I have um, someone in the back burn we soon can talk about. And um, yeah, I think in in General, it was a, a really insightful and nice conversation. Hey, I had a lot, a lot of fun, a lot, a lot of fun today, Joe. So thank you so much for having me. Yeah, you're very welcome. And thank you everyone for listening. Uh, follow us for more. And yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, I will post more often on social media yeah. about about this about yes. the things we experience and find yeah yes yes all yes. right yes okay all right guys. thank you very much everyone um have a great weekend <laughs> bye bye <laughs>